chatter intensifying on social media about China President Xi Jinping's future. There's speculation President Xi may step down amid strict COVID lockdowns and an economic slump. CNBC contributor to Wardrick McNeil is following the very latest. He's senior policy analyst at Longview Global. It almost seems even unthinkable that this would be chatter on social media to Wardrick, but here we are. Um, how do you sort of grade this, this rumor? Well, I think we have to accept that the anger is real, the discontent is deep, certainly among the citizens of China, particularly in Shanghai, and even, Melissa, among some of the rank and file party members uh, of the Chinese Communist Party. However, I think we have to slow down because we've seen no signs that the elite members of the Chinese Communist Party are in any way looking uh, to replace uh, Xi Jinping. And I certainly don't think a step down, if that were to happen, would be happening any time before the party congress in the fall. But I will say, uh, Melissa, that you know Xi Jinping has been enshrined in the party documents as the core. And so when I hear some of these statements about stepping down, you know what's important for the viewers to understand is there's a secondary question, and that is stepping down from what? Xi Jinping has three positions, the president of China, he is the general secretary of the Communist Party, and he is the chairman of the Central Military Commission. And it's those latter two that is the extreme power, not being the president of China. And I don't see him stepping down from either of those, certainly not general secretary and chairman of the military uh, commission. So I think she is well on his way to a third term. But there will be some pushback in terms of his policies that has caused this discontent and caused this anger. That is real. Yeah, I was going to ask you just along those lines. I mean, the fact that we're discussing the possibility of this really underscores um, the, the notion that, that the discontent is real and it's rampant in China. So how, how might the government then respond to that anger in terms of policy? Well, I think the first thing we're likely to see, uh, Melissa, is Li Keqiang, who's the premier, uh, step up between now and the party congress and start to moderate policy a little bit more towards the market-oriented uh, position that we saw China going towards reform and opening up prior to the Xi Jinping era. It may be too little, too late, but I think Xi Jinping has certainly gotten the message that perhaps it was too much, too far with the over-centralization of the economy. So I would look there and see what happens with the tech sector, with the real estate sector. I think we're going to see some policy loosening around those areas here within the next several months. Hey, Eduardo, it's Tim. Uh, always fascinating to hear your thoughts on Chinese policy. H how about monetary policy? How about the weakening of the yuan or the renminbi, whichever you're looking at? Um, how much pressure do they feel from this and capital flight? Uh, is that being focused on? Absolutely, it is. China's very concerned about this. However, Tim, you'll remember that they've been very, very reluctant to turn on the taps and sort of stimulate and juice the economy. They've been trying to do a good job of disciplining themselves around this. But I suspect, given where we are, all of these things are going to be on the table. And despite some of the early resistance to monetary policy, some of the fiscal things that uh, the Chinese have sort of eschewed in the past, I, I don't see any of this off the table as we move towards the party Congress, to be honest with you. All right. DeWardrick, thank you. Always great to get your analysis and perspective. DeWardrick McNeil. Um, Karen, you know, not too long ago, we were talking about companies with great Chinese exposure, and maybe that is not a selling point anymore for investors. How are you feeling about that sort of question right now? Well, that's exactly what I was thinking. I don't know if you were thinking, all right, well, not only will they have a sort of less of a zero COVID policy so mm -hmm. that things open, but the supply chain improves and demand improves. They're not in a lockdown. So, to the extent, you know, a Starbucks, a Nike, someone, you know, companies positioned like they, that would be a good thing if, if Xi Jinping had to loosen those restraints to be able to stay in power. Yeah. Um, Tim, your nickname has been in the past the ambassador. So I will ask you this yes. question. Do you feel like, I've got you know, having the, the party Congress <laughs> meet later on this year, is that some sort of backstop to the Chinese economy? 
I, I think it's a, a reaffirmation of power. There's no way he's stepping down. I think after that, he could actually make some moves that are more accommodative, and you could actually see some moves that might be uh, e either, uh, from a sentiment perspective, more beneficial to especially their, their Internet sector. By the way, how about last week, J.P. Morgan having to retract but in a major research report calling China uninvestable? Um, sure. and, and, you know, clearly some political pressure from that. But, you know, again, look at emerging markets, 40 percent China. Get China right, you get EM right. Dollar strength is something also that I think the minute you start to see the dollar weaken, EM may be worth buying again.